Hi everyone, Rebecca, the frugal resinista coming at you today with a geode pour. As you can see, my geode has already started and I'm sorry I did not show you the beginning of this. I was testing a new technique. Um, if you can tell by the camera angle that you're at now, I'm not sure if you can, but um, I'm doing a 3D geode. That geode, the glass in the middle and everything else that I put in there um, is actually level with the table and popping up through, which I'm really excited about. And um, like I said, I was testing it this time, but I will do a few videos on how to make that happen. And when I get done with my pour today, I'll also give you um, like a side view of it so you can see what I'm talking about with how 3D that is. Um, so I'm sorry you don't have that part today, but to give you the short of it while I'm mixing resin here, um, cut a hole with a razor blade into my canvas and then um, used wax paper and a glue gun to um, just glue the shape of, that I had cut out with some of my less expensive glass that I had, set it underneath, and then built it all up um, around the edges. Took about an hour, so I figured that wouldn't be a great start to this video anyway. But um, anyway, so I started with that, and I will, like I said, give you all the details of that later. I am using right now Stone Coat Countertops Quick Coat. I'll show you real quick. Um, I'm getting low on it. Here's the hardener. And I am doing that for a couple of reasons. I love using the Quick Coat in my geodes because um, there are so many people out there doing geodes of different styles and stuff. But what, what I like to do, because a lot of people like mixing their colors a lot, I like letting a few of my colors mix, but not everything, because if you look at real geodes, they have very distinctive lines in them that are very sharp and very straight, and their colors don't mix as much. Um, so if I use the Quick Coat and I want some sharper lines that aren't quite as mixed, I can do that a lot easier with the Quick Coat resin. So um, I'm just pouring some of this into some different cups here. You have to move quick with quick coat. You get about a 15 minute working time at most. Um, and that is it. So I am just separating this to give myself a little more time. If you leave it in, um, one container, it definitely hardens faster and gets really hot really fast. I can already feel this cup getting a little hot. So I'm going to move quick. And then as I make this geode, I will have to keep mixing more because you can't mix all of it at once and have it work out. So I've got clear right now. I'm going to add a tiny bit of Stone Coat Countertop White Glitter just to give everything some sparkle. What is already in there is um, some decorative glass I got at Hobby Lobby that goes into like the bottom of vases and things. And then also those glass beads that you can get. I um, heated those up, smashed them up, and um, put those in as well. So, all right. And then these larger pieces are actually um, beads. They are glass, but they were in the bead section at Hobby Lobby and have little holes in them, but I took them apart and stuck them straight up in the air and um, have them laying there like that. So I'm happy with how they turned out. All right. So I'm pouring my first layer of quick coat in, just trying to get it all over here to hold things in place. Like I said, there was some hot glue used that is definitely in the bottom. But after I used that just to make the shape, I also sprinkled a bunch more broken glass on top. So I'm, I got to get everything stuck down and everything around the edges isn't really stuck down either. Um, so Get that all in there. I did my best to attempt to make um, this whole little basin that I've made um, totally free of any spots where things could leak, but I am sure that there will be something. So I'm also doing this with plastic underneath it'll peel off. And I'm just gonna go a little bit at a time. I'll do each part, pop the bubbles, and then move on. All right, I got a little bit on there. Okay, so next I am using a couple of things. I am using Perlex Powder Pigment, um, and this one is their white color. And I'm just gonna mix some of that up. I might give myself a little more of that because this has the sparkles in it and I like that. Um, and then I'm also using a gold, 
My plan this time is to make this a little simpler than I usually make geodes. I usually have tons of colors in my geodes. Um, and I like lots of lines in my geodes, but I'm going to try to go with fewer colors. This one has just um, an apple barrel copper color in it of paint. And then I also did some Ranger gold alcohol ink because putting those together at the same time um, will have the alcohol ink rise while the paint settles and it'll give me a bit of a 3D effect. So I'm just gonna do what you've probably seen on a lot of videos. We're gonna go around the edges and start letting the resin mix. Um, I just have a quicker working time, so I'm gonna move it along with this stuff. All right. I've seen some really, really pretty geodes on Instagram lately that are only using like two or three colors of like gold and white and I really like those um, so I'm gonna attempt it myself to do fewer colors and just see how that turns out you can still definitely blend these colors that is not a problem um, quick coat moves just like any other resin does you just don't have quite as much working time So the name of the game today is we're going to mix and pour and mix and pour and mix and pour back and forth. Now I don't like how much that white is hiding this coppery gold color so I'm going to add more of that in here. Alright. And with a lot of the tutorials that I've been watching and learning from, a lot of people I've noticed make their own dams with their resin with all kinds of different things. People are really clever with it. I've seen glue, I've seen liquid nails, I've seen all kinds of stuff that people use to um, keep their resin right where they want it. And on the one hand, I like that, and on the other, um, I don't know, I'm just learning about this and I'm kind of having fun so far with letting it go all over the place. So. One of these days I'm sure I will experiment with trying to keep resin in certain spots, um, but not yet. Right now, we're going to let it move around. Alright. Okay. Alright. Alright, you guys, that is, um... It for my gold that I've done so far. Now I'm going to, instead of add another circle, I want to make this white line bigger that's already here. So I'm just going to pour this in and let it really push things around. And then we will torch this whole thing up and I will mix more resin. I'm just going to go back and forth one little bit at a time. Let me hit this with the torch. And then I am going to um, tilt it a little bit, but not too much. Alright. I also don't know how much is leaking through the bottom. <laughs> so I can't tilt it too, too much. Um, so with geodes, here's what I like to do. I like to let these colors on the bottom on this bottom first layer that I'm doing, mix in a little bit. I'm letting them really mix together, I'm trying not to get them way down into the middle of my geode, but I'm um, definitely letting them mix together. And then what I will do is with my second layer, I'm going to change that whole game plan completely. And um, with the second layer, I'm going to have really very tight lines. So. Um, I still have some clear left here. I'd like a little more copper in the middle. I don't love that color versus the color on the outside. I like the color outside better. So I'm going to mix just a tiny bit from my stir stick of copper in there and drop it in a few spots. Just giving it a tiny bit more color. Drop a little color in there. 
All right. All right, and we will keep going here. Let me grab some more cups. All right, starting my resin mixing again here. So as I'm doing this, let me tell you a little bit about what I have going on. I have um, left a little bit of my clear resin with the sparkles in one of these cups, hoping I can mix this fast enough to use that still. Um, I would like to have some that's hardened a little more than the rest because if I do that, um, it'll sink through the other colors and I'll start getting a more 3D effect if I'm using some of the resin that's like 10 minutes older than the other resin. So that is my goal. And you will just have to wait a second here while I stir and keep going. Okay, so I've got more resin mixed. I'm mixing more of my Perlex white in. I'm gonna do more of it this time and make a larger ring. And then because I want variation in this, even though I'm using a really smaller color palette, I'm going to um, alternate between this copper that I used and gold paint so that they're both a shimmery goldish tone, but they're a little different from each other. So I'm mixing my next thing of Perlex. I'm gonna add a little more resin to that because I want a big white line through here. All right. Get that all mixed in. Okay, so just like before, we will start the next one. This one, like I said, is going to definitely be wider. Quick coat, um, is awesome. Like I said, the only thing you have to get used to is you have to mix and mix and mix and mix because you can't do it all at once. All right, I still have a little bit left in here, but not much. I'm gonna go ahead and scrape it out and use this whole thing on this circle that I'm on here. There's just a few things you have to remember when you're doing quick coat is that um, you gotta hit it with the torch more often too because you don't wanna wait till it's starting to set with your bubbles. All right, so I'm gonna set that aside for a second. And then I don't want all of my um, copper to disappear, so I'm just gonna add, this was that clear that I had a little bit of glitter and just that little tiny stir of copper in. I just wanna see what happens. I'm putting it kinda of on top of the copper between that and the new white I just did, just to kinda of go through the white so that the copper shows through. Um, and then I'm gonna add my gold layer, and then I'm gonna start tipping this thing. I don't know if you can tell from the angle, but like I said right now, this was the one I mixed before um, in the first mixture, and it's already sinking through the other colors because it's a little harder, it's moving a little slower, and it's kind of neat, it just opens up color underneath. So, all right, this time, like I said, still using my Ranger mixatives. I'm gonna stick that in my cup. Good nine or ten drops. Oops, squirt. There we go. And then I'm going to grab my gold paint. Now the last time I used copper, this one's more of an actual gold. And then um, if you've watched other videos on this where they're mixing paint in, you've probably already heard it, but it's best to use at least a one to ten ratio of paint to resin because if you use too much um, paint and not enough resin, you will end up with your resin not curing correctly. So, we mix that up. We're gonna add that to everything. See how that's a much more golden tone than the cop than the copper. I will um, use that. That's not copper. It's bronze. Um, I will use that again the next time I mix. I'm gonna do like two or three more mixes to complete this whole thing, but. For now, we'll use this gold. 
And I don't know if you can tell when I pour, this already has, um, not even that it's curing it, but it just in general, it has a thicker concentration to it. Um, it looks thicker, more like paste when you're working with it. Um, I've got a really tiny line going here. So let's see if I can get, get it to break. And then add a line in here. So again, like I said, I really like having lots of skinny lines just because I feel like that's what the real geodes look like. Here's the trick is just getting this to stop without. Whoa. Pretty close. <laughs> um, I really like all the thin lines because I feel like that's what real geodes do when you look at photos of actual geodes that have been cut. So that's what I'm always going for is trying to get these lines in. And then I will do the same thing with my acrylic markers when I'm finished. All right, see how it just has such a different consistency? It's real thick and gooey. Okay, using up the last of this and then we gotta get it moving quickly because it's getting pretty toothpaste consistency. Um, the heat gun, or I'm using a torch, the heat gun or the torch that you use um, can really help you because temporarily when you hit these, it will um, make them much more able to move around so that you've got a little more flow. So, but here's the weird thing about it. It also cures them faster. So getting these bubbles out briefly, it helps me to be able to move this color around um, because it loosens things up a little, but then this is gonna cure even faster. So I don't have a lot of working time. All right, oh, I'm really happy with this so far. Okay, I'm gonna hit this with the torch one more time because my gold just, I can see little bubbles under the surface still, and I might even hit it again after I mix. All right, I'm gonna start mixing again, and I will catch you on the flip side of the mixing. So money-saving tips. We're pretty far into this, and I haven't talked about that yet, and you know that um, if you've watched any of my videos that I'm way into sharing money-saving tips with you on how to do your resin without losing all your money. Obviously, your big goal will be to sell your paintings and then you're making money and able to buy more resin to support your hobby. Um, but some of the tips I have on this one are the Stone Coat Countertops um, resin that I used is, um, I, I got it on sale because an artist I was, a few artists I was watching, so Abstract Boss and Artist Till Death, they both had different coupon codes going because they've been working with Stone Coat Countertops and I um, gratefully was able to take advantage of one of those and to um, to get a discount from their coupon code that they use and that was so nice. And I will link you to both of them because they've done some amazing geodes that are just really exciting to watch them do. Um, so I did that. I got a whole bunch of canvases when they were really on sale at Michael's um, and I'm using one of those canvases. And then I mentioned it at the beginning, but the glass that I'm using was on sale at Hobby Lobby, part of it. And then the other part of it was, um, was the glass pebbles that I busted up and, and pulled apart and used. And um, I think they turned out really nice. Oh, I love how this copper's falling in here into the middle. So. Now, I will actually leave you guys for a second and I will mix some more resin and we will keep playing. Okay, so I'm using a bigger cup to mix this time because I want my next um, circles around here, my next layers to be thicker. And um, I can do that because I'm still not gonna be pouring like six different rings all at once. I'm still just doing a couple. Um, I'm just doing them larger so so one of the things with this quick coat is it feels thicker than regular resin even from the start and sometimes it takes a little muscle to, to get it moving but all right so back to my copper color I'm pouring some into the copper pouring quite a bit into the copper and then I'm gonna do a really big one of white as well um, so let me get 
these mixed real quick and then we'll make our next lines. And then I'm going to show you guys some other um, elements that I incorporate into this that I'm kind of excited to show you too. All right, so I have to remember that I have more clear because I don't want to waste my clear and have it harden while it's sitting here waiting. All right, clear's over here. I'm going to add some more white. And a big line of white and then we'll put some copper in some different spots around it. Ah, I just snapped my stir. All right. So let me add more of this around the edges and then we will keep going. I want a big thick ring of this white so that I can use some of my gold pens my um, acrylic ink, acrylic paint pens um, into it for some sharper lines. So that's why I'm gonna make this next, next one thicker. Also, just as a tip for anyone who does not know, you can use nail polish and resin. Um, nail polish absolutely works. Um, what you have to watch is nail polish, like alcohol ink is lighter than the resin, so, if you do a really thin line, instead of it staying like a thin line, it's gonna to come to the top and spread and cover your other colors. So what I like to do is wait, like this stuff is probably getting a lot harder now. I'm not gonna to touch it and find out, but um, it's probably getting harder. So after I get done with all my pouring, I'll come back and add some nail polish pouring um, into the spots where I feel like it's probably already pretty set. And um, that'll add some cool lines too because I have some golds and coppers and sparkles and things in there. And this is layer one. There will be another layer. I haven't decided if it's going to all be resin. I'll definitely do a clear top coat of resin over everything when I'm done. But um, I haven't decided yet what exactly I want the next layer to look like. All right, I'm going to try. Ooh, get it pouring. Hope I get this right here. I'm going to try to add a copper line through the gold line and then we'll still move this around. But remember, because these lines are a lot harder already, I'm not going to be able to move things too much. So one thing to keep in mind when you're pouring these little lines is to try to pick things up um, while you're still moving. Don't stop or you'll pour a puddle. Trying not to pour too much of a start puddle, but I haven't figured that out yet. So if anybody else has a good technique on that, please let me know. All right. Okay. So that is almost gone. Have some more white. I think what I'm going to do is just keep all my white going. So I'm going to add this clearing that I still have to my white and pour a whole lot of white because I like what I have so far, but I um, think I'm adding a little too much color. What I was envisioning originally didn't have quite so much color to it. So let me just separate my coppers and my golds a little bit and make this a lot more white. And then obviously we got to hit it again with the, um, Ooh, I just accidentally added a whole lot of whole lot of sparkle. Um, we'll need to hit this with the blowtorch because I can see a ton of bubbles in the copper. Oh my goodness, let me do this over my trash can. I got powder popping up the top. Okay. All right, <laughs> we'll see what happens. I kind of just made this a toothpaste consistency. But that's cool too because it's going to sink through some of the other colors. Sometimes it's fun to have little mistakes like that because then you can see what happens with them. I haven't tried it this thick before. All right. Ooh, that's kind of cool, actually. All right. I'm going to add a little more white in the middle of this gold way back here. Get it pouring here. All right. So what I often end up with 
is um, spots where my geode is not flat because this dries so quickly. Um, but that's cool because I am, um, sorry, I'm trying to pour and talk at the same time. It's hard to concentrate. Um, that's cool because I'll do a top coat of clear that just covers everything and makes it flat. And in the meantime, it lets other color and stuff show through. So it turns out looking really neat. All right, this is really turning out pretty. Now I can see that I really need to get to my blowtorch and pop some bubbles before this starts getting too hard to pop bubbles. So let me do that. Got a lot of bubbles in here. Okay, let me move this around a little as much as it still will. See in this middle part how stuff is moving a lot less? It is set up a lot thicker already. Kind of excited to get to my edges here. Once I get to my edges, I'd like to, um, Add some more stones. We'll get there soon. Alright, I don't want to cover up all my little lines in the middle too much, but I want to get, get these colors moving around too. See how the middle is moving so much slower than the edges? Just gonna bring it back to the middle. Okay, we have a tiny bit more of my bronze copper mix here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just try to pour that around my edges. Maybe it's getting thick. Actually, why don't I make it a little darker in the middle here? That line kind of disappeared a little on me as I moved things around. So let's get more copper in there. All right, it's getting thick. So that's about all I can do with that one. And as always now, I'm gonna catch you guys after the next. Okay, I am finishing up mixing the next batch of clear resin. And I will start adding colors. Again, I'm going to go back to this lighter gold now since I used my bronze and a whole bunch more white, just like the last time. All right. The gold is a Craft Smart from, I believe, Michaels, and they sell those for 99 cents. So I'm always careful about how I'm spending my money. You guys know that. And um, my alcohol ink I got on Amazon. Oops, sorry, I did not. I got my white on Amazon. I got um, this alcohol ink at Hobby Lobby when they were having a 40% off sale of all their alcohol inks. So. I always try really hard to catch the sales as they're happening, just to make sure that I am um, staying frugal with what I'm purchasing and still getting all the products that I need. Get a whole bunch of white in here. All right. So in the back of my mind as I'm doing this, because I'm working on such a quicker scale than you normally would. I have to keep in mind if I have extra anything in any cups. So I still have a tiny bit of extra clear and I make a note to myself about it. Um, so one thing you'll notice is that a lot of times I say reuse your sticks and everything, but these 
just everything just hardens too fast. So unfortunately, I can't save money by reusing sticks very well on this one. However, I got all of these stir sticks at the dollar store. And it was like 80 of them for a dollar. So I'm saving money there. All right, a whole bunch more white coming along here. I did it really thick again. I liked how it looked the last time it was really thick. So we will go with that again. Alright, all this out here. I don't know about you guys that do this, but for me, every time I get to these edges, I have a hard time pouring and not making a mess, but that's okay because we're going to tip it. So it won't matter. I might add more on this side um, in a little bit with that clear that I have left, but we'll see because I'm going to see what I end up with with the gold. All right, so that's sitting there. The thicker, um, if you haven't worked with resin a lot, the thicker you leave your resin, especially if it's in these big cups, the faster it hardens. And so um, leaving little bits in my cups to go back and do stuff with is not too bad. It's the um, cups full that I have to make sure I get out. So that's why I'm trying to pour the majority of each cup pretty quickly and then go back to do other things. All right. I like hitting the edges of my resin because I feel like then I start to get a good picture of what things are going to look like as I move them around. All right, see if I can get over here. I'm also standing up and sitting down and you'll see me change positions a lot, trying to Get the right angle for everything. All right. Cool. There's a tiny bit left in there, too. Just making that note to myself, as usual. And I don't know. I had wanted this to be mostly white with just a little bit of color. And then I told you guys that. And then I kept going, and I kind of liked all the color in it. So. Maybe I'll just mix a big batch of white to finish this off, but I don't know. I still might want to add a few things to my edges. All right. Let's do some moving things around. So, a quick talk about edges. I have a few different techniques that I like to use. I actually haven't decided what I want to do with my edges on this piece yet. Um, I don't know. My options, right now I have it taped off so the edges are empty. I'm going to just help this along to push it all the way to the edge. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to keep the edges empty. I know some people like to, um, pull their tape off as soon as they're done. So then everything starts to pour over, which I might try. I just have never done it before and it's kind of sounds fun. So maybe I'll do that with this one. Um, I have another video with a green geode. I wish I remembered it off the top of my head, but I will link it in the bottom, um, where I show you how to do a new technique for edges. Um, since geodes are broken open stones, um, I actually do a stone edging that's really cool. Um, and so if this doesn't pour all the way over when I take the tape off, I might go that route because it turned out so neat the last time. I'll show you guys that in a second. But um, that's another alternative. So I'm thinking about that. I'm going to, just like I said here, I'm going to add the rest of my clear and do some white. Um, I was thinking about doing more stones in this thing. I don't know. As I'm looking at it, I'm not really sure where I would want them because I really like how these lines are turning out. And I kind of don't want to mess up the lines. So I'm not 100% sure yet. Looks like I'm going to have one more mix resin mix to do um, to finish filling up this whole thing. But I don't know. So I got these cups just as a little quick tip. You got to really watch how you um, mix because they've got grooves in them, but if you can make sure to get it mixed well enough, the grooves are nice because all the resin pours down one groove and you can concentrate it better into one pouring spot even though you were using a big cup. I thought that was kind of cool. 
Uh, we'll go right along the very edge of my tape here. I don't have much of this left, so I'm not sure if I'm going to make it all the way around or not, but we will see. Now, I have not hit this last side of tape, so I really want to make sure that this resin covers that last edge. Alright, just pouring this all in. Oh, you guys, I love how these colors are turning out. Alright, let me scrape the last bit of this out. And then I think we only have one to go when we are good with the resin. Alright. Just gonna move this around a little. Get this thicker. And thank you guys for watching my full tutorial. I know these are long and kind of involved and appreciate you. If you are still watching, you have stuck it out for a really long time. <laughs> so thank you. All right, get this and then I'm gonna move it around. I might move it a little more and see. I don't wanna obviously disturb any of these lines because these lines are turning out so stinking cool. Um, but I'm trying to eyeball how much more resin I need because I don't want to mix more than I need. And what's nice, I don't know if you'll notice, everything from like that last layer of copper in is not moving too much at this point. So I can still really mess with my outside edges without screwing up my inside lines. Another awesome thing about using the quick coat resin. See how it's all basically hard in here at this point? I'm well over 15 minutes into my video, so 15 minutes worth, and um, a lot of this is done. I mean, I'm not going to stick my finger in it yet, but I could somewhat without it actually being too disturbed. Okay, just getting all this back to center, and then we're going to do one more. Um, I don't need as much this time. So as I've been doing the whole time, I'm going to mix and I will catch you at the end of it. Okay, I am finishing mixing up this last batch. I've done all three colors this time. I'm doing a lot of white and then I'm doing some bronze coppery color and then some gold because um, I'd like to go through like I did with the inner layers and on a few of these outer layers, um, add some more tiny rings after I get my big ones poured. So I'm just finishing pouring it into each of these. And then we will see what happens next. All right. Okay. Saying it aloud, just to remind myself again, I still have clear left over. So I'm going to set that over here and grab myself stir sticks. If, um, if you want to make sure that you're working fast enough with this stuff, I would suggest setting up your studio space or whatever you're doing with a whole lot of extra supplies. So all of my extra stir sticks and extra cups and everything are always out in a spot where if I'm in the middle of a pour and I think, oh shoot, I should have gotten an extra whatever, um, it's already right there for me. Even if it's not on my painting table, it's really close by. Okay, so I like this white. I'm going to try to really fill up my corners with it a little bit here. Maybe I'll fill up a few corners with it and then add some color to the other corners. Um, but I'll get all the edges filled in and then I'm gonna start some extra lines. I think as I, as I was um, mixing, I was thinking about how I was gonna do these edges. I think I'm gonna just peel the tape off after letting this settle for a while and see what happens. Um, I don't, I don't know. I don't think it's going to pour over the edges if I let it sit for a while, quite like it would with a regular like art resin. Um, so I don't know. I think it sounds fun to try to see what's going to happen. And um, the nice thing about what I was talking about with the other technique I've been using with um, making the edges look like stone, like a real geode, is that you can use that um, even if you've already done something else, you can cover over it with the stone look. So um, sometimes that's my plan from the beginning, but if this happens to not quite work right, 
that can also be my plan. So um, just a nice tip. Like I said, I will link that at the bottom because I haven't seen anybody else do that. I feel like that's my idea and it's a pretty cool one. So maybe you'll like that. Um, I'm going to head and just get this all the way to the edges because there was enough and we're pretty much to the end here and just adding lines. So get all those in like so. There's not really any of that left, but I'm going to leave it there just in case I need a few drips. All right. So I've got bronze and I've got gold and I am going to start making some lines in here and one more time move things around. I'm really happy with all these lines on the inside and they're not really moving now, which is awesome. So I will be able to I'm going to start moving while it's pouring. I will be able to move these lines around a little bit without disturbing those too much. All right, and again, I'm going to end this line, but I'm going to keep it moving till it stops. Here we go. Ah, one little drip. That's all right. I can pull that out in a second. Same thing here. Start moving. Now, if I do end up doing nail polish, I'm not sure if I need to. I've got so many cool lines in here, but to make it another layer, um, if I end up doing nail polish, I start that moving before I do anything with it actually pouring out. It's already going in a circle before I actually have it coming out. Little of that one left. My gold. Now, um, depending on how you have your space set up, some people want to do this and some won't. I'm going to pour it off the edge of my table real quick here. Because I'm using the tape, um, I want it to look like another line was going around instead of having it pooling in one spot. So I'm actually going to let this start pouring off the edge and then go like that. Oop. Do the same thing over here. And over here. Okay. And then I think I'm going to come back and do that with my bronze because I like that look. And see if I can get one more skinny line out of all this. And then we will tip it one more time and call it good. Now I will definitely let it sit a little bit before I take this tape off because I don't want it to all pour off. But I definitely want to try it and see what happens. All right. So. Oh, that last one a lot of resin. All right. I'm going to tip this one more time. See how almost nothing but the edges are moving now because everything is already getting nice and solid. All right. Okay, I'm gonna hit it with my blowtorch one more time. And I will pull off the edges in a little while. All right, everyone, I'm back. I peeled my tape off, and um, I am now at the point of drawing some lines. It's only been an hour, and this is how fast this quick coat resin works. I am touching this. Only been an hour. I'm going to draw some gold lines and some white lines on this one, just using those two colors. I love how many lines I already have, though. Um, and so I'm not going to do a lot, but I am using... Painters Ultra Fine White and Gold Marker from Pilot. And I will speed this up so you can just watch it quickly since this is already a long video.
with that. Um, I have a couple flubs that I had because it's just hard to keep your hands steady without rubbing everything else. But um, you can actually go back with a little tiny q-tip with some alcohol on it and rub those off. So like a couple little splotches here I'll just touch up and fix. Um, but let me go ahead and show you guys what this looks like up close since we haven't done that yet. Um, my sides didn't quite work out. As you can see I actually waited too long to pull everything off. Um, it was already hardened up enough that it didn't totally do it, but, um, oh gosh, see if I can get this in focus. There we go. My lighting's not great in here right now. Uh, there's a big window next to me, but it is super cloudy and rainy today, but I'll show you what I can. Some really cool details in there. Again, a couple little spots I'll have to touch up with my pen, but I don't know. Some people can do it all at once, but I just cannot. And then, like I said I would, I'm going to show you. Here's the 3D effect. That whole center is actually dipped way down in and coming out. It's about almost an inch deeper. I don't know, with all the glass in there, about a half inch probably. Um, and it sticks up over the top, so... Anyway, thank you guys for hanging in. This was a really long video, but you can do a geode in one day with that quick coat resin and how fast it dries. Um, my next step will be to pour just a clear coat over this, and I might do some gold paint on the edges, I think, where it didn't go through just because that'd be pretty, and then do the quick coat. So thank you all for watching, and have a great day. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.